Hi, welcome to Algebra 2, Lesson 1-5, Solving Equations and Inequalities by Graphing. In this lesson, we'll be able to use graphs and tables to approximate solutions to algebraic equations and inequalities. Let's look at model and discuss. A homeowner has 32 feet of fencing to build three sides of a rectangular chicken run. So it does say that the perimeter is 32 feet. But if you notice, um, it is it is just talking about the three sides of the rectangular fence. So the perimeter of these, um, these sides are total 32 feet is what they're saying, okay? So <coughs> um, keeping that in mind, let's look at our questions. <coughs> We're going to make a table of values for the length with an area of different rectangular chicken runs that will utilize 32 feet of fencing. So we know that these two sides, the lengths, are going to be the same, right? And the width is going to be just one, <coughs> one side. <coughs> we, can, we can use x for the width, right, since we don't know. Um, and we know that the lengths, two lengths plus x will be 32. And so how can we write the length in terms of x? Well, we can solve this equation, right? Um, and solve for l. So we have 2l is equal to 32 minus x. And l is equal to 32 minus x divided by 2. OK? So <coughs> We can say that um, the perimeter, 32 feet, is really x plus 32 minus x divided by 2 times 2. Or you don't have to divide it by 2. Plus 30, 32 minus x. Right, because um, 2L is 32 minus X. <clears throat> so that is our parameter. How do we write a function for the area? Um, we know that the area is going to be width times height, uh, width times length, right? But in this case, we just don't have the other width. So that affects the perimeter, but not the area, right? The area is still going to be the same, um, even though we don't have one width. So finding the area should be <coughs> width times length. Um, we know that this is the perimeter. This represents the perimeter, right? Um, but we, we want to write a function for the area. So your length, again, is x. So x times your length. 32 minus x divided by 2. So you're going to multiply that. 32 minus x divided by 2 would be your area. So we can say a of x because we're writing the function a in terms of x. And now we can graph our function using... Um, our graphing calculator. Okay, so we're gonna put in a of x is equal to x times um, 32 minus x divided by 2. And then this is our function. Okay, we have a line. Interesting. Um, yeah. <coughs> so we're supposed to have a quadratic. I think it's because our graph is too small. Uh, our graph is, um, yeah, there we go. Now we have a quadratic function. So if we look at our function from zero, it goes up, 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 up until it hits the maximum point at 16, 128. So what does our x 
represent, our x represents the width, right? And our y values is our function. It represents our function, which is the area. So when your width is 16, then our area is going to be 128. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then <clears throat> if we go down, 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 we have 32 comma zero. So if we if our x is 32, you have 32 minus zero um, divided by two, which is zero times 32. So that's just zero, right? So your length can't be 32 because uh, your width can't be 32 because um, that means your length is zero and that doesn't happen in real life, okay? All right. <clears throat> So uh, once you graph, uh, once you see the graph, you can easily represent, you can easily see um, the maximum point. You can easily see what they represent and you'll understand the situation better. Okay, that's why the graph, that's why we're graphing. We're using graph to understand the situation better. So we graphed it. Um, you can... You can draw a simple little graph here that graphs the important points. You can graph the vertex, 0, 16, 128. And then you have 32, 0. <clears throat> okay. And then let's explain what happens where the graph intersects the x-axis. So what is happening in the x-axis we just talked about? At the x-intercept, so 0, 0, and then 32, 0. What is happening? Well, at the x-intercepts, one of the dimensions of the rectangle is 0, right? Which means the area is 0. So. You need to know what they represent and what they mean. Okay, let's write that down. At the, oh, that's like too big. <clears throat> At the x intercept, one of the dimensions of the rectangle is zero. So dimension means either the width or the length, okay? So the area is zero because length times width is our area. And if one of them is zero and you multiply by zero, then it's zero, right? So this is part C. <clears throat> okay, so essential question, how can you solve the equation or inequality by graphing? Example one, use a graph to solve an equation. How can you use a graph to solve an equation? So we're going to use a lot of graph um, in this lesson. So be ready to graph and interpret what they mean. Um, yeah, so first, solve negative 3x plus 20 equals 5 by graphing. So algebraically. You can solve it algebraically, right? Uh, how are we how are we going to solve by graphing? So we're representing two expressions here, right? We're saying that um, 3x plus 20 should be equal to 5. So that could represent one equation. This could also represent another equation. Although this looks like one equation, we can represent <coughs> <coughs> two different expressions as equations, right? One, the first equation, y <coughs> equals negative 3x plus 20. And then the second equation could be 5, y equals 5. And so we're saying that it, when the two expressions are equal, when the y values are equal, um, 
what is x? We're solving for x, right? So the values <coughs> for x <coughs> that make this equation true will be our answer. So by graph, if we graph y equals nine, y equals five, we have a horizontal line here, right? All your points here would be would have a y value of five, and then we graph minus 3x plus 20. So we start with the y-intercept, and then you count your slope to graph your linear function, and then you have an intersection point. You will see that there is an intersection point at 5, 5, right? So when x is equal to 5, y is equal to 5. That is your solution. So x is equal to 5. <clears throat> they, you, they will have the same values. Okay, so by looking at the graph, you're looking at the intersections. So if we have two linear equations, then that's easy, right? What about quadratics and other types of equations, right? So look at part B. We have um, absolute value, right? So if we have absolute value, how do we solve them? Um, we have one absolute value and a line. So just by looking at the graph, we see two intersection points, right? Do you see them? Yeah. Um, how, how, what, are the, what are the values um, for these points? So that point would be 2 comma 2, right? And then this point seems like 10 comma 6. Yeah, so these are the intersection points which represent your um, solutions. So when x is equal to 2 and 10, and 10 uh, your y values will have the same values. So those are your answers. Those could be your solutions, OK? Yeah. Um, so now let's try number one, A and B. You can use a graph. So don't, you don't have to try to solve them right now by algebra, but try, you can use desmos.com or if you have a graphing calculator, you can use your graphing calculator to graph the two expressions separately into two different equations and then, and then see if there are any intersection points. Okay, pause the video and come back when you're ready for answers. <laughs> 